Sunderland are killing it in the championship right now as they are once again in the fight for promotion. Well, their biggest rivals, Newcastle United, are also doing very well themselves. They're playing in the Champions League and they're once again fighting for a top four finish in the Premier League. And as a Sunderland fan, that simply can't feel good. But don't worry, guys, because that's where I come in. In today's video, I'm becoming Sunderland's new manager with the goal of making them not only better than Newcastle United, but to make them the best team in the world. So this is the starting 11 with Sunderland that I've loaded into and whilst on paper it doesn't look that impressive believe me this team has got some talent we've got defensive midfielder daniel who's showing great potential 21 years old and 71 rated there's jack clark who's the best player in the team based on overall who's 22 years old and 74 rated i really want this guy to be an end game winger for us and we've got joe ballingham as well who's only 17 years old 64 overall and i'm thinking about building the team around this guy alone and when you look at our highest rated players you'll notice that the average age is about 23 at best man we have got a ridiculously young side the only real downside is we've got some contracts to sort out but hopefully with us being in the championship it won't cost us that much altogether so like i said guys whilst it doesn't look that impressive on paper believe me we have got a lot of talent to work with and i am once again opting to use the gig and pressing tactical vision purely because of how young this team is they've definitely got the legs and stamina for it and after messing around with the team a bit this is the strongest starting 11 we can field and i honest to god love the looks of it so far now obviously hume is a right back but i'm going to convert him to a center back because those stats look more like a center back than a right back plus when we got someone like pembali who's recently transferred from psg i'd be daft not to use this guy and what amazes me with this starting 11 our oldest player is 23 years old man that is absolutely mental and if we play it right majority of our team could end up in our end game team and the good news keeps going we've got 8 million to spend in season one but having seen the team now i think i'm going to add a rule to this considering the quality we've already got in the team with our young it is i'm only going to bring players in who are 23 years old or younger i mean Sunderland for the past two years have been trying to do this anyway and i'm gonna keep this going and don't get me wrong i love how this team looks right now but i'd be lying if i said to you there's not one position i'd like to improve we need a better striker than burst down man he's 60 rated and whilst he is only 19 years old and probably got a bucket load of potential if we are to take the championship seriously this year and fight for promotion this isn't who we need up top and with 8 million in the budget i think we just splurge this on one striker because i'm so goddamn happy with the rest of the team and i think i found the striker i want costa rican international manfred agaldi he currently plays for fc20 he's only 21 years old and 72 rated he's got 85 acceleration he's got 85 balance he's got 74 finishing i think this guy will absolutely kill it in the championship now his market value is only four and a half million so i don't think we're gonna have too many issues bringing him to sunderland having said that we are gonna start off cheeky and offer him four and a half million as exact market value they only want six 16%. Okay, what if we increase the selling clause to 25% and decrease the offer we're giving him by 1 million? Maybe they'll go for that. Okay, they want a 22% selling clause with 3.85 million in the transfer bid. Okay, let's increase that to 25 because I've got no intention of selling this guy anytime soon. Let's drop the transfer bid to 3.5 million. Let's see if they'll go for it a second time. Okay, they've increased it. You cheeky sods. I didn't want you to bloody increase it. Okay, let's meet in the middle. 3.7 million with a 25% salon clause. Okay, they are being stubborn. You know what? Let's just accept that bid. And there we have it, guys. Our first signing of Sunderland manager striker, Manfred Agalde from FC20. I mean, I hope this guy is the right choice, man. He looks pretty decent anyway. He will be wearing the number nine jersey. I think he's going to absolutely kill it in the championship, but only time will tell with this guy. And that leaves us with four million in the budget. And I know I said I only wanted one player, but with that amount of money left, I'd be daft not to use it to improve the team even further. Now, the one thing I'm not doing is replacing Ballingham in that starting 11. I said to you guys from the beginning, I want to build the team around Ballingham and I intend on sticking to that. I'm not going to lie though, this is really tricky on where to improve it, man. Obviously, there's areas that are weaker than others, but with the team being this young, by the end of this season, they'll all massively improve anyway. So it's not a case of which position to improve, it's which player in that position am I going to sacrifice to get a better player into that position. But I feel like I've got to go for Equor. Aside from Ballingham, he's the lowest rated player in the team. He's only 67 rated and with 4 million we can definitely bring in a better CDM and luckily I found Matthias Galazu who currently plays for Genk he's only 21, he's 70 rated and let's be honest guys, for a 70 rated player these stats for CDM aren't bad at all and he'll cost between 3.9 and 3.1 million, we've definitely got the budget to bring him to Sunderland but with his market value being 2.9 million I'm going to go cheeky and go 2.8 million and see what they say to that now they want Patrick Roberts and 1.7 million to be fair, I'm not opposed 
opposed to having a swap deal with this if it means getting a cheaper deal because remember we've got to sort the contracts out afterwards and i just realized their manager doesn't even have a body look at him he's got no body ea you've made a phenomenal game fair play to you now if we are to give them patrick robert i want to give them way less let's give them one million they only want a five percent selling clause that's absolutely fantastic that's one part of the deal done straight away and there we are shaking hands with a bodiless man fair play ea fair play and there he is in the sunderland kit he's here for a five-year deal and i'm pretty sure that's our transfer window done now and as you can see i've spent a lot of time loading players out including our cams bradley dark and alex pritchard but that does leave the team looking like this heading into season one and i've got to say guys i'm thrilled so far with how this team looks nobody in this team is above the age of 23 years old everybody in this starting 11 has got a bucket load of potential i can genuinely see this team getting promotion in season one but to be honest i'm not too fussed if we don't get promotion in season one because with the amount of talent we've got come season two we'll definitely be fighting for it then anyway but we're fighting for it now as we finish third in the championship we're in the playoffs alongside leicester city Preston north end and southampton and to be fair norwich we're only six points above us in the end so we weren't far off automatic promotion but we are in the finals of the playoffs as we've beaten southampton 3-1 in the semis and we're playing leicester city chowdhury and ian Acho absolutely kill our dream dead and we remain in the championship for season two we did also get knocked out in round three of the fa cup and we got knocked out in round two of the carabao cup so it's back to square one there isn't it but just look at the improvements in our starting line especially joe ballingham man 69 overall i'm gonna do my absolute best to make him our end game central attacking midfielder but stats wise jack clark was our best player gained 25 goals and nine assists in 52 games fair play to him but look at dan neil getting 17 goals and five assists from a defensive midfielder all he got more goals than our actual striker man that is not acceptable but the fact that this team is still so young and we got the playoffs in our first season in charge i'm telling you now boys we've got a bright future with sunderland and that journey with them has only just begun so it's now time for season two of sunderland and we've got 18 million to spend in our budget and to be fair guys this is more of an hindrance than a positive thing because look at the state of this team and you got to remember there's nobody above 24 in this entire starting 11 so that begs the question where do i actually put that 18 million there's no way in hell i'm replacing balligan he's only 18 years old he's 69 overall and after last season's performance he solidified himself as our central attacking midfielder our defensive partnership of neil and galaza are both 22 years old and they both massively improved last year so they're going nowhere either maybe though we bring in a left back for Sirkin and a center back for ballard i know this may not be a popular decision but honestly guys where else do i improve the squad i mean our front four are fantastic our dms are good our goalkeeper's good it's literally ballard and Sirkin that are the two weakest parts of the team and with 18 million in the budget i'm pretty certain we can find a center back and left back under 23 years old that are better than them and can replace them now the fullback i found is maxime de Coupier. now i've definitely butchered that name but he stands at six foot tall he's 75 overall so he's automatically better than Sirkin. and when you look at his stats he's got 75 acceleration 78 sprint speed 85 stamina and the beauty of it is he'll only improve i think he's the perfect fullback for the championship now his market value is six and a half million so i'm gonna go half a million underneath that they want 7.1 million that's not too dear to be fair let's drop it down to 6.3 and they've accepted it that's one part of the deal done straight away we're gonna offer him a five-year deal in his 16k a week i'm pretty sure he's gonna go for this is he wow he's come back with 20k 200k signing bonus and 20 clean sheet bonus as well bloody hell this guy's greedy okay let's remove the bonus let's decrease this massively and oh, do you know what i'm happy with that they've come back with 22 and a half grand and 195k bonus jesus you are greedy for a 75 rated player lad okay 22 and a half grand a week he'll be in with 145k signing bonus he better accept this there we go at long last you better be bloody worth it for all the hassle you've just given me lad and there he is guys in that sunderland kit but for a 75 rated player this guy's got the ego of bloody ronaldo and that leaves us with 10 million in the budget to bring in a better center back and i think i know just who to bring in armel balakotchap from southampton he's only 22 years old he's 76 overall he's got a five star weak foot and just look at his stats almost 80 pace almost 80 defending and physicality this guy is an absolute monster but this is going to be tricky his market value is almost as much as our entire budget we're gonna have to be bloody good at negotiating this deal so to start with i'm gonna offer eight and a half million that gives us a little bit of breathing room when it comes to the contract negotiations so they came back with a transfer fee as you can see we simply couldn't afford so now i'm going to offer them 
five five million. Let's hope that this actually persuades them a little bit more. Nope, they want eleven point four million. We're not going to be able to do this with straight money. We're going to have to offer a player. The question is, who do we actually give them? Maybe a straight up swap deal for Daniel Ballard. He's worth just under five million, and if we offer them that alongside maybe seven. Whoa, what am I doing? Oh my god, my head ain't with it. I'm offering six and a half mil alongside Daniel Ballard. I know that might not be a popular decision, but we're doing this for a better centre back. And they've accepted it, thank God. And that does mean we are one step closer to signing Armel Balakotcha. Now I'm going to offer him 30 grand a week, two and a half grand more than he's currently on right now. So hopefully he goes for this. He's actually gone for it. He's not a Ronaldo ego guy like the bloody left back that we just brought in. He's actually happy with 30 grand a week and he's happy to join Sunderland. And there he is, guys, in the Sunderland kit. I think signing him takes us one step closer to promotion. And that leaves the team looking like this going into season two and hopefully our second and final season in the championship. I mean, come on, guys. That has to be our goal for this year, man. We were almost there last season. We made the playoff final, but ultimately Leicester City were just too good. But this season with a much better Sunderland team from the get-go, I'm pretty certain not only we can get promotion, we can get it automatically. And I was absolutely right, boys. We've been promoted automatically second in the championship. I could not be happier with this performance. I don't care how we do domestically. But this time we did make it to round four of the FA Cup. And this time we made it to round three of the Carabao Cup. You know what? We've actually improved our performances in the domestic cups as well. And that's not the only thing that's improved. Look at the state of the starting 11. I'm not being funny, guys. I reckon we're going to have a very successful first year in the Prem. And once again, Jack Clark is our best player. 36 goal contributions in 51 games. That is phenomenal. But look at our fullback, Maxim. He's got 16 goals and 7 assists. That's actually more goal contributions in less games than our striker, Manfred de Goldi. This guy is actually turning out to be a bit of a fraud. He might be 79 overall, guys, but if he don't book his ideas up next year, I'm getting another striker. But the fact of the matter is, it's only taken us two seasons to get this Sunderland team, a very young Sunderland team, may I add, back into the Premier League. But the question is, are the stats going to look like this come the end of Season 3, or are we going to get our absolute backside handed to us in the Prem? But before we find out, guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you leave it a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. So, guys, it is now time for Season 3 with Sunderland and it's official the Black Cats are now back in the Prem and I've got to be honest with you looking at the team right now I feel like a mid-table finish is on the cards even without making any transfers and improvements to the squad but we've got just under 70 million in our budget man I would be absolutely moronic not to use any of this money on the team it is definitely getting improved but where do we actually put this money man I mean obviously Bellingham right now is the weakest link in the starting 11 but I've made it very very clear from the get-go he is going absolutely nowhere so far, his growth and improvement as a player has been absolutely phenomenal. And whilst that keeps going, there is no reason for me to get rid of it. That does, however, lead me to Pembele. I mean, he's 77 overall. Aside from Ballingham, he is the weakest link in the team. And we all know having a very solid defence in the Premier League works wonders for actually doing well in it. Now, I was initially thinking of a centre-back for Balakocha, but I only just brought him in last year, which does lead me to the CDM role where Galarza is. I mean, he's only 23 years old himself. He's 78 rated. He's actually a very, very good player. But alongside Pembele, he is the weakest link in the team. And guys, I'll be honest with you. I don't really want to make any transfers. But with 67 million, I feel like I absolutely have to use this money. Now, starting with the fullback, I'm going for Tino Livramento from Newcastle United. He's 80 rated. got some absolutely phenomenal stats. And the most important thing is he's got a ton of Premier League experience. And he is officially our first signing of Season 3. Of us. We've only had to spend 29 million to bring him to the Black Cat. And there he is in the Sunderland kit. He's miles better than Pembele. I think this is a world-class signing. And that leaves us with 34 million to bring in a defensive midfielder. And I think I know just who to bring in. I'm going for Amadou Onana. He's 6 foot 4, 80 overall. He's got so much potential, this guy has. And for 30.6 million, he's the latest player to join Sunderland. And that's our transfer window done. That leaves the team looking like this, heading into our first season in the Prem. And honestly, guys, I'm absolutely loving this team right now right now. There's only four players below 80 rated. Nobody is above 25 years old. I can honestly see this team taking the Premier League by storm this year, man. But one player I'm keeping my eye on is Ballingham. He's 74 overall. And if he can have another season like the last two, I've got no doubt in my mind he's going to be catching up with his older brother. But our first year in the Prem has been a good one. Eighth in the league at the end of this season, man. I mean, we're nowhere near Newcastle United. We've definitely got some catching up to do with them. But for our first season back, this is phenomenal. But we only 
made it to round three of the FA Cup once again. And we only made it to round three of the Carabao Cup. You know what, guys? Just for once, I'd love to get further than round three. However, looking at the team, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think we are one season away from getting into Europe, man. Just look at the state of this squad. Especially Joe Ballinger, he's 79 overall, 20 years old. He's an exciting prospect. I am so happy I put faith in him in season one. And whilst the stats aren't as impressive as last season's, Jack Clark is once again our highest goal contributor, gained 16 goals and 8 assists in 42 games. And finally, Manfred Agolde is our second top goal scorer, 11 goals, 5 assists, 40 games. You know what? I'll let you have that one, lad. I'll let you have that one. It has been a crazy first season back in the Prem with Sunderland. If we'd have finished one place high, we'd have qualified for European football next year. But we've got two objectives for season four. We've got to get European football, no ifs, ands, or buts, and we've definitely got to catch up with our rivals, Newcastle United. So it's now time for season four with Sunderland, and we've got just over 17 million to spend, and I think I know exactly where to put that money. But looking at the starting 11, you'd obviously assume I'm thinking of a new right winger in place of this guy, but you're wrong. Instead, I want a better centre back than Balakotchak. Now, there's a very good reason for this, so just hear me out. Now, it's true, it'll only take 10 weeks for Balakotchak to improve in overall, but after that, I don't think he'll grow anymore. There's no arrows up for where his stats will be improved, so that indicates for me, once he reaches 81 overall, that's the peak of his potential. Whereas, our right wing will only take three weeks to become an 80 rated winger, and look at the arrows, man. After he becomes 80 rated, he's got a lot more potential. I feel like we keep him, and we go for another centre back. And with us having 71 million in the budget, and only being able to bring in players 23 years old or younger, I think I know just the centre back to bring in. Antonio Silva is the centre back I'm thinking of. He's 83 overall at 22 years old. His base stats look incredible. 82 pace, 84 defending and physicality. This guy is an absolute monster. He will cost between 65 and 51 million though, so he definitely isn't cheap. Now we do have 71 million, but that doesn't say I want to spend all of it. I am a cheapskate after all. So with that being said, let's offer them 59 million on the dot. They want 60 and a half million. You know what? I'm going to go dead stingy. I'm really stingy at this point. 60 million. Half a million less than what they want. And they've accepted. We are one step closer to getting an absolutely incredible centre back. We're offering 65 and a half thousand with a 460 grand signing bonus. He better bloody accept this. That's a lot of money. And he's accepted it. He is officially a Sunderland player. And there he is in the Sunderland shirt wearing the number 28 shirt. I feel like he is going to be the difference make a frost this season. And after that transfer and sorting everybody's contracts, we've only got 5 mil left in the budget, but to be fair, he is the only signing I wanted to make, so I'm happy to leave the transfer window as it is. And just look at the state of the team, man, going into season 4. I've only skipped a couple of weeks, and Ballingham and this guy have already gone up in overall, man. We have got an entire starting 11 80 rated or above now. I'm telling you now, guys, if last season with a weaker team, we finished 8th in the league in our first season back in the Prem, this season we've surely got to get a top 6 finish. And that's exactly what we've done. We've finished fifth at the end of season four. We are miles ahead of Newcastle United. And the best part, we've got European football for season five. So now that we're better than Newcastle United, we just need to make Sunderland the best team in the world. And my job with them is done. And we actually made it to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. This time, only losing to United 3-2. You know what? I'll definitely take this. And we made the Carabao Cup final, but lost to Newcastle. You can't bloody write that, can you? We were so close to winning this competition. But just... Just look at the starting 11. It is absolutely phenomenal. There's been so much improvement this year. Dan Neal's 88 overall. Now Jack Clark's 90 overall. And the best one I've saved to last. Joe Ballingham has improved 6 overall this year. And he's now 85 rated. This guy is an absolute monster. And this time Manfred Agaldi got the most goal contributions. Gained 30 goals in 48 games. It's about damn time he started playing well, isn't it? It has been an amazing year for Sunderland. 5th in the Premier League. Man, we've got Europe League football next year. And I can't lie to you guys, looking at this starting 11, I feel like once we've made the appropriate improvements for next year, we will absolutely run right in that competition. So we're now into season 5 with the Black Cats and I'm not mucking around, we're getting straight into the transfers. I thought it was time we brought in a better right winger and believe me Forbes is the right winger that we need to take us to that next level and potentially help us to win the Europa League. And he only cost 31.3 million, man, we got a bargain with him. I know they're both the same overall but when you compare the stats, there's absolutely no competition. Forbes is by a mile the better right winger. And that still leaves us with 120 million to spend. And I think I know which position I want to improve next. It's time we went for a better left back. Granted, he is 82 overall. And those stats, to be fair, are exceptionally well-rounded for a fullback. But if we want 
to win the Europa League, we need somebody better. And that somebody is Milos Kirkes, the Hungarian fullback who's currently playing for Udinese. He's 83 overall and just look at his stats, man. He's absolutely phenomenal. Now his market value is 37 million, but he's definitely not going to be going for that much. So we're going to go for 47 million, 10 million above his market value. And they want 48.6 mil. You know what, guys? We're loaded now, so I feel like we can just accept that offer. I'm offering him 80 grand a week for a five-year deal. I'm hoping that he actually goes for this. I'm not too sure what he actually wants. It looks like that's exactly what he wanted. So Milos Kirkes is now officially a Sunderland player. And now just look at that starting 11. It's absolutely fantastic. And it's safe to say now there's no weaknesses anymore. But that can't be said for the Suns bench. I think we need a better striker and a better goalkeeper. And now I'll be happy to leave the transfer window there. Now starting with the keeper, I'm going for Joaquin Alvarez. He's 21. He's 79 overall. I think he will be a very good option as a second choice keeper behind Patterson. As for the striker, I'm going for John Durant, a former villain player just look at his stats man 86 pace 82 shooting 85 physicality he will be an amazing replacement for our current striker and for the combined total of 50 million we have now signed a backup goalkeeper and a backup striker and that is our transfer window done and that leaves the starting 11 looking like this heading into our fifth year in charge of the black cats and i feel like come the end of this season we'll have a couple of trophies added to our cabinet i mean not only is the starting 11 looking good so is the subs bench man there's literally no weakness throughout the entire squad. I feel like we should at least expect a top four finish in the Prem and easily at least get to the semi-finals of the Europa League. Now we are in Group B alongside Valencia, I'm assuming that's a Danish team and Dynamo Zagreb. And like I said guys, top four finish in the Prem and at least the semi-finals in the Europa League, man. I'll be absolutely gut-wrenched if we don't get either of those. But we're off to a good start. We're third in the Premier League at the end of Season 5. We've got Champions League football for Season 6 no matter how we do in the Europa League. That is phenomenal and the best thing is Newcastle United are nowhere to be seen. They're 11th for God's sake. We are well and truly levels above them now. And we once again made the quarters. This time Man City knocked us out. You know what? I don't mind this. We're having good cup runs now. And we also made the quarters of the Carabao Cup. This Sunderland team, I absolutely love it at the minute. As for the Europa League, we did top the group stage undefeated relatively easily, may I add, and we go to the round of 16. And that's where we quite easily get past Villarreal 4-2. And in the quarters, we absolutely dismantle OGC needs 6-0 on aggregate, man. We have definitely got this in the back. Okay, maybe not. Ajax beat us 3-0 on aggregate in the semis. Wow, okay. I have just been well and truly humbled. But let's be honest, it doesn't really matter because we've got top four in the Prem, which means we qualify for the Champions League for season six anyway. And with the team looking this good already, I feel like next year is definitely the season we get silverware. And Jack Clark is once again our top goal scorer, getting 33 goal contributions in 58 games. I've got to say, though, look Looking at the stats, I expect it better considering we finished top four in the Prem. We made the quarters of both the FA Cup and Carabao Cup and made the semis of the Europa League. But the important thing to take away from Season 5, we've got Champions League football to prepare for in Season 6. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I really don't know where to actually improve this team, man. Everybody is incredible. So it's now time for Season 6 with the Black Cats. And I just wanted to show you guys something real quick. Jude Ballingham is 25 years old and 91 overall. Now Jude Ballingham is one of the best youngsters in the world right now, but Joe Ballingham is 22 years old and 87 overall. He is definitely catching up with his big brother. Now, here lies my problem for season six. We've got over 200 million to spend on the team. But where in God's name do we actually put that money? We've got a lot of money to spend on a team that doesn't really need that much improving. I mean, look at the source bench for God's sake. Even that is absolutely fantastic too. The only thing that comes to mind is finding the highest rated players possible who are 23 years old and younger and just bring them into the team anyway, no matter what position they play in. And I think I found one. Taylor Arnold, he's 87 overall at 21 years old. He's definitely better than Livermento, so I feel like it's worth bringing him into the team. And guys, for a whopping 110 million, we have brought Taylor Arnold to Sunderland. Now that does leave us with 94 million in the budget, but honestly guys, unless I'm being absolutely moronic, I don't feel like we need to spend it. There's no glaring witnesses that we need to sort out in the team. And that does mean the starting 11 looks like this heading into season 6. And I'm not being funny guys, we have got to win some trophies this year. I mean, when the Suns bench is this good, you know you've done something right for goodness sake. This year, we have to be contending for
for the Premier League title and we have to be going for the Champions League trophy too. Now we are in Group C alongside Real Sociedad, Porto and Slavia Praha. It's a pretty stellar group to be fair, Real Sociedad and Porto are decent outfits but like I've already said, Premier League title and we are gunning for the Champions League trophy too. And we've won the Premier League title, we've beaten Arsenal 2 by 3 points, we only got 74 points though, oh my god, you'd be lucky to get 4th place for that in real life. But it doesn't matter, we've won the Premier League so we're definitely better than Newcastle United now and we are definitely the best team in England this year. However this time we only made it to round 4 of the FA Cup and we made it to round 4 of the Carabao Cup. Honestly guys, I've given up trying at this point with these competitions. But as for the Champions League, we stormed Group C, 5 wins from 6 and we cruised to the round of 16. And that's where we just about beat Atletico 2-1 on aggregate and we go to the quarters. And we just about beat PSG as well, 3-2 on aggregate and we could be playing against Real Madrid, AC Milan or Inter Milan. And we played against Real Madrid and beat them 3-2 on aggregate. Job Ballingham has just knocked out his bigger brother Jude Ballingham to get to the Champions League final. And we will be playing against AC Milan in the final. Now we all know how good that team can become so we've got to be careful. But looking at these stats, I can't lie to you, you wouldn't believe that we're about to compete in the Champions League final and we've also won the Prem this year. But this is the team heading into the Champions League final and oh my god, we have done a madness with Sunderland. The thing is as well, we've kept five of the OG Sunderland players from season one in Patterson, Hume, Neil, Ballingham and also Jack Clark. I'm so happy with how this team has performed this season. We've already won the Premier League, now it's time to try and win the biggest trophy you can win at club level, the Champions League. Here comes Forbes though, on the right hand side of the pitch, we're going to cut in, that was way too easy, what are you playing at there lad? A goal, they were going to cut in, oh no, on his left foot, can we take a shot, oh Magnan save! Let's try something different for a corner, we're going to go out, right, first time Ballingham, it is, ooh, that's not a bad effort you know. Here come Milan once again on the left hand side, oh look at that for a bloody interception. Now Forbes is on the move once again, oh once again he's done his defender so easily there. I don't know whether he's left footed or he's right footed, let's go for a left footed shot and it's blocked. Oh here comes AC Milan's Rafael Leal, we all know how good, oh no he's just done me for a kipper there, what a save from Patterson, oh my god. Here comes Arnold, we're going to try and find Forbes, what is that? That's actually come off really low. Lucky. Can we find four? Nope. Okay. Why did I try to do the same thing twice? Oh, look at that. Jude Ballin, give me his phone clock. Okay. Outside the box. Let's have a pop from distance. Oh my god. Magnan, stop it. Okay, we've got a corner. Clock to take. Can we get anyone's head? Hume's there. Can we get a rebound? Anybody? Okay. Silver. First time shot. First time shot. Um, that's what happens when I try to be wacky. We've got Neil on the ball now. I'm going to go wing to Forbes. Oh, look at that. I see that. Ballingham. Power shot. Line it up, lad. Oh, I thought that was in, Ballingham. How did you miss? Here come AC Milan early in the second half. I feel like we should definitely be 1-0 up, though. Great tackling. Okay, Milos Kirkes is on the ball. He's coming forward. He's seen that. Oh, that is a phenomenal ball. Jack Clark is coming inside on his right foot. Surely there we go. Beautiful counter attack. Milos Kirkes feeds Jack Clark, and Clark makes it 1-0. That was a genuinely gorgeous through ball in, and Jack Clark is never in a million years missing from there. Well, here come AC Milan. Oh, great defending. Oh, my God. Once again, great defending. We got away with that one, guys. We got away with that. Well, as he's on the ball now against Arnold. What are you trying to do there? You're never getting past Arnold like that. Come on now. He might be named after Trent Alexander-Arnold, but he can actually defend. AC Milan got Katruder on the ball now. Great blocking. Oh, can we do it again? Great save, Patterson. Jesus. AC Milan got the corner. 15 minutes to go in this game. Oh, that's an E. What is... Whoa. What? What's just up? Wait, what? What's just happened there? What the hell? Oh, this a handball or something? What's going? Wait. That's a chest. How is that a handball? Oh, we've just been shafting McAllister. We're going bottom right. Yes! Get in. Justice is bloody saved. Now, we we come with Arnold on the counter attack. Ramos is trying to get back, but it doesn't look like anything's happening. We're going to have a power shot Denied. from here. Oh, my God. What a save from Magnan. Ballingham turns. Oh, okay. We got, oh, my days. What was that for a touch? But here come AC Milan. They've got a chance to make this one. No. Oh, that's great defending. Get it out. Oh my god, what am I doing passing it back to the keeper like that? But it doesn't matter. We've beaten AC Milan 1-0 with the Black Cats. We have made Sunderland not only the best team in England, but the best team in the world. And I can't lie, guys, this was a fun rebuild. Sunderland's team is absolutely cracked. And if you enjoyed this video, you should definitely click here to watch me manage a team of wonder kids for 10 seasons.